Pico models are powered to make commuting and running errands quick, but they're also made to be fun for weekend adventures with a 30 mile per hour top speed and a 40 to 70 miles of riding range on a single charge. Learning to ride a Pico is easy, but like any new skill, it takes practice to feel confident. Before you take your first ride, please watch our training videos. You're also welcome to schedule an in-person training session to learn the basic skills. For a Pico subscription, you don't need a motorcycle license, but you must have a valid U.S. driver's license and be 18 years old or older. You can ride with regular traffic and in bicycle lanes, but never on highways or bridges. You also cannot carry passengers on a Pico. They are designed for one rider at a time, and you are required to wear a helmet whenever you ride. We've broken down the basic skills into eight simple steps, and it all starts with safety. Even though Pico is a fun ride, it is not a toy, and safety is always the priority. Every rider should wear sturdy footwear with non-slip soles, long pants, and a protective jacket. Using gloves and eye protection are optional, but strongly advised. On the other hand, wearing a helmet is not optional. By law, it is required to wear a helmet that meets Department of Transportation standards. If you don't own one, you can add one to your Pico subscription. Every time you ride, you should do a pre-ride inspection of your Pico, which takes only a moment. The good news is that because all Pico models are electric, they have few moving mechanical parts, which reduce service and maintenance costs. You should examine the tires and wheels to make sure that they have the proper air pressure and there are no cracks, dents, or loose spokes obvious to the eye. You should check that the lights are working, your brakes respond, and there are no warning messages on the Pico dashboard. Remember, if something's not perfect, report it to the Pico member's support department and our team will assist you on quickly resolving it. Make sure to check on your battery level on the Pico dashboard during your ride. Picos can go to 40 to 70 miles on a full charge depending on the model, but make sure your Pico has had enough charge remaining to get wherever you're going. You can find the battery compartment underneath your scooter's seat. Both hands and feet are used in operating and controlling a Pico. It is important to know the location and operation of all the controls and practice smooth and precise coordination when using them. The handlebar is an important component of any Pico because it is the primary way to control direction. The throttle is the right hand grip and it controls the motor speed. To increase motor speed, roll the throttle towards you. To decrease the motor speed, roll the throttle away from you. The throttle should rotate back to idle position automatically when released. The front brake lever is found in the front of the right hand grip and is operated with the right hand. Squeeze it in to operate. The rear brake lever is the lever on the left hand grip. The turn signal switch is usually located near the left hand grip and is operated with your left thumb. Most must be manually turned off after return or lane change. The high and low beam switch is used to select a high or low beam on the headlight. You should always ride with your low beam lights on. The horn button is usually located near the left hand grip and is operated with your left thumb. Before you take your first real ride, you should focus on mastering the basic ride skills. We've broken down the initial steps of riding into eight simple moves. Number one, get steady. Before you start your Pico and use any of the controls, seat yourself comfortably on your Pico, leaving one or both feet on the ground and your hands at a comfortable distance on the handlebar. Make sure that your mirrors are adjusted. Good posture helps you maneuver more easily. Keep your back straight and head and eyes up. Keep your knees and elbows in, arms should be relaxed and bent. The wrist should be positioned flat on the throttle. Number two, keep both hands on the handlebar ready to use the brakes. Always keep your hand on the handlebar with brake levers within quick reach. There's a lot going on out there in the streets and this ensures you will be ready to stop quickly and safely. Number three, move the Pico off the center stand. Straddle the Pico and push forward in one swift motion and the center stand will release. Once the center stand releases, you will feel the weight of the Pico. So get ready to keep your balance. Number four, do the duck walk. You're going to walk the Pico forward using your feet. This duck walk will give you a good feel of the Pico's weight as it moves and is a great way for getting out of tight parking spaces. Number five, do the reverse duck walk. When you are parking your Pico, either by a curb or in a garage, you'll always want to reverse it into a space. To do this, you're going to reverse duck walk, keeping your hands on the brakes, move to the front of the seat, use your feet to push the Pico backward, and make sure to check behind you for any obstacles. Number six, use the throttle to get some speed. Once you've walked the bike without any throttle, you're going to give it some power. First, start the Pico and check that your electronic dashboard lights up. When you're ready, slowly pull back on the throttle and the bike should move forward. As the Pico gains speed, it will balance out and you can pick up your feet. 
Number seven, get the Pico back on the center stand. Once you've backed in, you're going to put the Pico on the center stand. Turn your hips toward the left side of the Pico, put your left hand on the left brake and your right hand on the handle near the storage box. If you don't have a handle, place it under the body of the Pico. Put your right foot on the center stand, holding the brake steady. Now, push down with your right foot until you feel the center stand engage. Push down and back with your right foot and up and back with your right hand. Use the weight of your body, not your strength, to do this. This is the easiest and most effective way to get the Pico onto its center stand. You shouldn't need to use too much strength. Once you get the feel, it will be easy. Some models come with a single side stand in addition to the center stand, which might be easier and faster to use for quick stops. However, we encourage you to use the center stand, especially when there is an elevation where you park. Your Pico will be more stable using the center stand. Number eight, practice. Practice makes perfect. You will need a quiet, flat area without a lot of traffic to practice these skills until you feel confident to start using your Pico. Now that we've covered the basic skills for your first ride, let's focus on two important skills that will be important for safe riding, turning and stopping. Turning a Pico while riding involves four primary steps, slow, look, press, and roll. Although in reality, these may not be distinct steps, they make a good starting point for learning to ride smoothly and safely through turns, corners, and curves. Making good turns takes proper judgment and good timing. Slow, reduce speed as needed before entering a turn. This is accomplished by rolling off the throttle and or using the brakes. The important point is to set up for the turn by establishing a good entry speed, which is a speed that won't require you to slow down while in the turn. Search through the entire turn and keep your eyes moving. Evaluate the entire turn as soon as possible. Surface characteristics, sharpness of the turn, and overall traffic conditions. So you have time to make decisions about speed and position in your lane. Sometimes turning your head in the direction of the turn helps you keep a good visual picture. Press. To initiate scooter lean, press forward on the hand grip in the direction of the turn. Press left hand grip, lean left, go left. Press right hand grip, lean right, go right. Roll. Roll on the throttle to keep from losing speed, unless you identify trouble or enter the turn with too much speed. Maintaining or slightly increasing throttle will help you stabilize the suspension, which will help you ride through the corner smoothly. Try to avoid rapid acceleration or deceleration when in a turn. In most situations, you and the Pico should lean together. However, for slow tight turns like a U-turn in a parking lot, use a counterweight technique by leaning your upper body toward the outside of the turn. Putting more pressure on the outside floorboard can help too. Turn your head and look where you want to go. Turn the handlebar more in the direction you want to go for slower, tighter turns. To stop, you should operate the controls with a smooth, coordinated action. Roll off the throttle and apply both brakes. The front brake provides 70% or more of the stopping power for your Pico. Rolling off the throttle provides some motor braking, and both brakes should be applied at the same time when stopping. Even though the full braking potential of each wheel may not be required for normal planned stops, it is important to develop the habit of using both brakes so that your reflexes will be ready to respond quickly and properly when needed. Be sure to develop your braking skills gradually. Learn to make smooth, controlled stops before practicing quick stops. It is important to have a good sense of touch when using the brakes. Too much pressure too quickly could cause a skid and loss of control. To help maintain your balance when stopping, be sure to have the handlebar straight and the bike fully upright as you come to a smooth stop. We are so glad that you watched the full Pico First Ride training video. We want you to enjoy your new Pico, and we want to make sure that you have a safe and enjoyable riding experience. You can always reach out to us at ridepico.com for further assistance. Thank you for watching.